background and then oh are you having uh, I, I just um, wanted to put, put I want to put the questions up there so they can see them oh yeah so after this yeah, yeah. but I've just left that in the background so now So folks, 
thanks very much for coming. Uh, I'm Graham Brookman. This is Kerry Jibberals. Hi. Um, we've been plotting um, a bit about um, a graduate course in permaculture. So if you're not interested in that, then you're in the wrong place. We're, we're going to be talking about university study of permaculture. Um, but first I wanted to sketch out a little bit of the evolution of permaculture training. Um, and and you, you sh one should always... Uh, uh, put the pictures of the great creators, our uh, founding fathers up when you do that. Um, so, so let's go right back to the 70s um, when uh, the children of the, uh, our, our wartime fathers and mothers, uh, you know, sort of we, we baby boomers had, uh, had started to get teenage kind of testosterone and we were starting to really flex our muscles and uh, it was a really, really plentiful time, uh, a very peaceful time really um, and, and, and so our parents were really kind of rich enough, they didn't need child labour, they, 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 they were able to accommodate uh, us doing just about everything so we went bloody crazy and uh, uh, one of the things that happened was that we, we started to uh, take our eye off survival and look at other bits of the planet, and particularly natural ecosystems. Um, now, uh, Bill Mollison had uh, been brought up in the countryside in Tasmania, a little island off the south coast of Australia, and uh, he'd... Uh, he'd, he'd he had to work in this bakery for a while, and and, uh, and then ultimately he thought, no, there's got to be something better, and he became a deep sea fisherman, and then he ended up trapping animals in the, in the mountains, and uh, ultimately he, he ended up um, getting involved with teaching and uh, research, and uh, so he, he developed his craft from being a bushman to... Uh, quantifying stuff in terms of ecosystem measurement and so he would be able to identify every little animal that hopped into a clearing in the forest and, and made really important kind of observations of how animals coexisted with each other so survival of the fittest uh, became survival of the animal most fit for that particular place in that particular time space and so, you know, at six o'clock, certain birds would be doing certain things and certain little marsupials would be hopping through and then at nine o'clock would be a slightly bigger mob. And, and so, you know, it was this idea that he was really convinced by that a particular space provides a lot of livings for different organisms and uh, that it was a, a super efficient kind of uh, arrangement. And, and that, I guess, gave him this idea of uh, permaculture being like a really stable, a natural ecosystem, but supercharged uh, for the benefit of humans. And he was never apologetic about uh, permaculture being about human survival on the planet. That's always been it. It hasn't been, we are here to, you know, we're here to have the World Wildlife, wildlife Fund or something. It's been here to be a great place for humans. But, by the way, humans need to have all of these other organisms in order to have a good place to live. And, uh, and an ecosystem that functions. And so he, he, he eventually ended up in this um, unit within the University of Tasmania, which was quite radical because Tasmania became uh, a place where uh, all of the activists, the environmentalists, ended up saving the rivers, the wild rivers and the old forests and so forth. And the uh, University of Tasmania like, didn't know what had hit it because it's one of the most conservative institutions on the planet. But somehow these bloody radicals had got in there and, uh, and got a, a school of environmental design going. And uh, David Holmgren, this young fellow, uh, he, he came over from Western Australia attracted by uh, the environmentalism. And uh, he, he ended up actually boarding with Bill. So he, he stayed with, in, with Bill's uh, family. Um, and uh, they got to talking and uh, ultimately, uh, you know, the two psyches kind of 
melded into this idea of a permanent occupation of the planet. And um, they were very uh, biologically kind of oriented and, uh, and had a, a, a real... Uh, a, a real interest in food production being the basis of survival, I guess. And so early on, it, permaculture looked like it was going to be permanent agriculture. But uh, as time went by, uh, it, it, it grew. Even in the book Permaculture One, uh, it, it sketched out all of these other domains of human uh, endeavour that were part of permaculture. So always, right from the publication of the first book, we have owned the whole of human endeavour, if you like. <laughs> now, that, that's, that's a big ask, and a lot of the early uh, writing and so forth and teaching was very much preoccupied with uh, food and ecology and so forth. And I still think that some of the principles and... Uh, so forth, are, are, are still too heavily biased towards the biogeographical sort of stuff. And Holgren, Holgren was a, a geographer, and, uh, and, and Mollison was a crazy bushman. Um, so, uh, so both with degrees, um, both having done more study, both with a, a, a fair bit of life experience, but Bill, like, he, 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 he just, once that, that first book, Permaculture One, was, was published, he went nuts. Like, he, he travelled the world. He... He didn't wait for uh, you know people to come to him. Uh, he, he was a re really, really evangelical person and absolutely charismatic. He's got a brain like you just wouldn't believe. He's got this big forehead. He's like that is full of brains. <laughs> and, uh, and and the other thing about Bill was he he had a tremendous humour and wit, and he was always quite happy to say, "And I've actually solved most of my problems with my fists." Uh, so quite an aggressive person in some ways, and uh, I, I, I witnessed him demolish a few students uh, in fairly short order. Like anyone who wanted to say that they, they wanted vegan food would be <laughs> machine gun, etc. So you had, you know, a, a fairly tumultuous uh, arrangement with women, um, and I, I remember seeing him in interview asked, you know, so how many wives have you had, Bill? Oh, five, I think. Uh, so, uh, it, was a, it was a very, very interesting person, and, uh, and so when he showed up at a conference or something, you, you knew that there was going to be a lot of laughter, and there were going to be looks of absolute horror at the sorts of things that he was quoting. But he was very loose with his figures. You know, quite often, a, a small diversion of you know, 10 times or 100 times the actual amount would be passed off with, with this big smile, and, you know, the like, we need 100 Earths, rather than, you know... Three, uh, you know, a tremendous overstatement, and you just forgave him for that. But he, but he engaged the world, and um, and they got permaculture one out in '78, and a permaculture two, which is um, a totally gorgeous book, uh, came out only a year later, um, and that was the one that just completely cemented permaculture. Permaculture one was just a wee bit academic, had a lot of tables, and there was. Quite a lot of academic words in the all David Holmgren might have had something to do with these words. Uh, but permaculture too, like Bill just grabbed it, and, uh, and it was Bill's, uh, and uh, he teamed up with uh, Andrew Jeeves to, that, that gave us those beautiful pictures, the line drawings, which uh, uh, has helped uh, uh, ever since. So he, he, he talked and he talked, and he kind of got people interested, he got lots of feedback, and ultimately said, right, I've got a course. We, we need to spread this stuff around. And so he got these guinea pigs, a whole lot of young radicals from around Australia, they all came in to uh, his place in Tassie. And uh, I don't know, Robin, were you, you a bit after that? I was a little after that, yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah some of my good Comey friends were at that first course. So, yeah. It would have been a hard drinking you know, a fair, I think. They would have, they partied as hard as they worked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that was where the, the PDC came from. This, this group of, I think it was 17 of them, and they workshopped, and they just drank and talked, and, and, and Bill had it after that. He said, right, I can duplicate this. And so uh, he just started cruising around Australia and around the world, 
teaching, 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 teaching. And uh, obviously, with uh, you know five, million, five billion people to teach, he needed a bit of a hand. And so, uh, given that he had a, a, a real uh, distrust of uh, universities, he, he he said, "Look, this has got to go viral. This has got to be grassroots." And uh, he, he he basically said, "You've done a PDC." You can now go out and teach. And something interesting that Bill once shared with me was with his design of the PVC, he said that he designed it as a major module. Because he'd been lecturing in university for 15 years in environmental psychology. And so he sort of did it as a, like a 72 yeah. hour oh. um, semester uh, major subject. Could be in a university. Presented so quite quickly. That's the level at which the PDC is pitched. And, um, and, and I think that's something that has been. Actually, lost. along the way is you know the just the level of that as a major module. Yeah. Um, designers. It's not an introduction to permaculture. It's not how to make a mud brick house. It's the PDC. Yeah. So there you go. So the so the PDC. Um, just got used and used and used. Uh, people bought it, and uh, ultimately, uh, people in different countries gave it their own kind of flavour. Um, uh, the sorts of examples that we use in Australia, which is a, you know just a bloody great lump of dry land, essentially, uh, weren't really all that relevant to um, Europe. Um, so I mean, the principles and, and so forth were. But, but the examples were, you know, up the creek in some cases. So we got lots of. Um, uh, we've got another. You can come in if you'd like and sit down. So another chair here. Yeah, we're just we're just waiting for our computer to come back. Um, and I guess then, uh, and, and at this stage, David uh, Holmgren had disappeared off into the shadows. Uh, he wanted to make sure that permaculture would work before he started teaching it and so forth. Sorry, we, 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 we did. I just, I was, just wasn't moving it enough, I guess. Oh, too much talking. Yeah. Not enough PowerPoint. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> we, need, we need more PowerPoints. Yeah. And, um... Do you want us to tell, you want to tell us what it is? Or if it happens again? Uh, the password <laughs> is remote. <laughs> <laughs> and the user is a remote. <laughs> oh, whoa. Okie dokie. Oh, how are you? Even better. Yeah, okay, that's, that's great. And, 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 and so the thing just exploded, and, um, uh, and Bill realised that he needed to flesh the thing out. Um, you, you can read Permaculture 1 in a few hours. And the same for permaculture too. That's that all there was. So we needed a manual so that people could actually do designs and out came that big, fat, totally unreadable uh, thing called the permaculture designers manual. Um, and that that was straight from Bill. Like that wasn't edited by anyone else. It seems. Uh, whereas when finally they published another version of of, of per, uh, permaculture one and two, which is called Introduction to Permaculture. That was nicely edited by his then partner, Rennie Slade, uh, and is eminently readable, and you can tell straight away that Bill didn't, re didn't write it. Um, and, and Bill at that stage moved up to um, the, the, the border of New South Wales and Queensland. Uh, there, it was that hippie area around the subtropics that really attracted the sort of people that immediately loved permaculture and it was also a place where you could develop a property quickly. Um, you know, none of this slow, I'm trying to develop a food forest in Norway, I expect to be quite productive in 200 years time. Um, it was uh, immediate gratification and, uh, and, and, and so um, that was the sort of foundation and uh, the ABC, that's the Australian Broadcasting Commission, um, Whacked him into a, a film in grave danger of falling food, which is which is quite a, a a good little introduction, and that went completely across Australia, and uh, like just about every Australian kind of saw it, and so the scene was set for Australia to embrace permaculture, um, and and then 
the same guys uh, who built the first film, uh, took him around the world and did Global Gardener, uh, which is uh, a series where, where you know, you'd see an episode each week, uh, and that went to many, many, many countries, and that was the big launch, really, of uh, permaculture worldwide. Now, uh, eventually, in the 90s, Holmgren came out of his burrow and, uh, and started to teach. Um, and uh, he's, a, he's a reasonably shy kind of person um, and not a natural teacher. He's got all of this stuff. And if, like, if you sit with David and, and just let him talk at you... Uh, he, he won't stop. He, he just he just keeps on going. And uh, but but at, at the same time, breaking up a teaching session into bits. Ah, forget it. You know, he, he just goes. Um, so I think my wife can be credited with just saying, "David, practical. It's got to be practical here. I've got to go outside." And he's and he's now developed a good teaching technique. And uh, and so. Um, uh, he had already started writing books, and he's got I don't know 15 books, something like that now. And, and he's you know more recently produced Permaculture Pathways, which is the text that uh, most people regard as the current sort of basic text for permaculture. Uh, there is no change essentially to uh, the ethics, and uh, very little change to the principles that were in Permaculture 1. They have arranged the wordings, you know, changed a little bit over time. Um, so ultimately Bill returned to Tasmania and that was when Jeff Lawton, who had been working intensively with Bill, um, uh, he, he, um, he sort of took over the Permaculture Research Institute bit of the... May I correct the history? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah. Robin lives there, so... Jeff, Jeff had not worked with Bill previously. Um, but he Bill was, was moving to Tasmania. He needed somebody to take over the farm. Right. And so he met uh, Jeff, and uh, Jeff seemed like a goer, and Bill invited him to lease the farm and to set up a separate institute. And so the, the Permaculture Institute continued, went down to Tasmania with Bill, and Jeff set up the PRI and uh, leased the yeah. Tagawi farm off, off, off Bill. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, but ultimately Jeff moved the Permaculture Research Institute, different from Bill's yeah. Permaculture Institute, yeah. to the Shannon, which is actually yeah. not that far away. Yeah. So, so, so there you sort of had a bit of a baton change from, uh, from Bill to Jeff. Uh, meanwhile, everyone else just continued chugging along teaching and so forth, and David gradually sort of raised his kind of public sort of image. And uh, so that left us still with just uh, the PDC and the diploma. And the diploma was um, essentially you needed to have been practising permaculture for a while and you needed some respected practitioners of permaculture to stand behind you and say... Yes, Kerry is a good designer, and suddenly you had a diploma of permaculture as well as your permaculture design certificate. Both of those things are still around. Uh, no problem at all. We teach them at our place. They're taught in 30 something, 70 something countries, heaps of countries. And, uh, and then, Robin, you'd better just talk about APT for a minute since we've got you here. Yeah. Why, well, why, why, did, why did we need something other than the PEC? Well, there's NPT, Accredited Permaculture Training. Um, that actually started with the, um, IP, the APC in Adelaide. Uh, we had a teacher's forum at that where we uh, discussed the need for accreditation of permaculture. Um, and uh, prior to that, I put out a discussion paper. Um, it took then 10 years of discussion at subsequent APCs. And APC, you know, Australian Permaculture yeah. Convergence. Um, and then in uh, 2002, we had a permaculture gathering because nobody had been, there, were, there weren't any APCs happening at the time. 
Uh, so we had a permaculture gathering at uh, Genbun Gardens and um, unanimously decided to go down that track. Uh, also, there have been changes in the VET system, that's the Vocational Education and Training System in Australia, which made it possible for us to accredit the courses and for the, them to be owned by the permaculture community. And it was decided unanimously at that meeting, Dave was actually also there, uh, that uh, that ownership should be vested in Permaculture International Limited because it was the only national entity that we had that had a democratic base because, you know, PRI and the Institute and so on, there, there were trusts and autocratic organisations. Um, so, uh, in 2003, the courses were accredited, uh, officially, formally accredited, and uh, then we had to train the trainers. So we spent a year training the trainers and uh, it's been running ever since then and now it's um, by the end of this year it's going to be on the National Training Register. So Permaculture International is sort of, has passed it on to the uh, government authority agri-foods. Yeah. Yeah. So, so effectively uh, what, what it meant was that a, a, a person who wanted to study permaculture, say full time, could get uh, their uh, study or um, student allowance, uh, and um, that, that that was just a, a really big thing because up, up until then, all of the PDCs and so forth required cash upfront, and uh, and so suddenly at least the students could have a living allowance uh, while they were studying. Was that 2005? Um. It started well, in two, I'm, I'm relying on Russ Grayson for these figures. I, uh, look, Russ's history is flawed. Oh, no, okay. there's, <laughs> I haven't talked to Russ yeah. about, um, there's a lot of corrections that need to be made. But it, um, that, yeah. that, was, that was the year I started delivering, but I had been busy training the trainers and developing my course materials for the 18 months before. So, so, so suddenly in Australia we had uh, courses that would run for you know a full year, two years, uh, with government backing of the students. Um, it was a revolution. It meant people could learn a lot about permaculture, not just ten days of PDC, uh, but it was limited to the vocational uh, training levels. And so it went through like certificate one, two, three, four, diploma. So. A significant kind of uh, evolution in the whole thing, and it was still true to everything that was in the original concept of permaculture. It didn't get hijacked by the government. It was constantly the curriculum was being designed and upgraded by permaculturists themselves. You have a question? Yeah, I'm just trying to um, get through all. I think it's relevant from this morning where they said it's too big job, and but so. Uh, I'm just, just trying to work out. Yes. So you've got the PDC. Okay, Permaculture Design and Certificate. And the Permaculture Design Certificate is a level three, really, equivalent. Mm, no. No. It has no status. No, no it's... Um, in the UK... Maybe it does. Yeah, yeah that, that's what we, yeah. we, we, we yeah. really yeah. need. It's, it's, certainly not, it's certainly yeah. above the level two, but it would be much more... Yeah. Level well, three would be more akin to... The, the, the content could, certainly um, is. Yeah. But do you get credit? Just, just keeping to the, instead of what I don't yeah. want to get too much yeah. into the detail. Mm. Um, so you've got a PDC, you then can do the applied yeah. level, which is demonstrating yeah. your, profici your proficiency of the certificate. Yes. So where... Which, which we in Australia would just call a diploma of permaculture. Yeah. Which, which was a Bill Morrison one. Right. 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 You can't, you can't mm. just do a peer... Uh, a peer review kind of operation for a TAFE qualification, a, a VET vocational education qualification, that, that has to be um, sort of through the system and, and the full curriculum covered or uh, go through that recognition of prior learning process. Uh, and a PDC, no, 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 stay with us, stay with us. We obviously need to move on. So basically, so basically you, you, in, in the, our country, you do the applied to the book. But therefore, is the accredit what I'm getting from the accredited permaculture training is simply that you actually end up with a diploma. Mm. Australian 
Uh, well, I created it. Can, can yeah. I just explain in a nutshell? The vocational training system in Australia has got up to six levels. Uh, one and two is very basic. A level three is a trade certificate. Level four, certificate four, is an advanced yeah. trade certificate or associate diploma. And then you've got the diploma. Uh, the uh, certificate four is like a two semester course, diploma is a three semester course. Um, and and you know, the certificate one and two is often offered in high school. Okay. I wasn't really wanting to yeah. get too much yeah. about the, the but, quality. Um, I mean, the, we've got the quality the, assurance the, framework, it's one yeah. of the principles. Yeah. Um, but what I was trying to get at is, is, is the accredited permaculture training you were saying it, it really is a means to getting, getting, I don't know what level it is, but it's really a means to learning as much as you can about permaculture and actually getting money up front. Yes. But it's not, but but do you end up with the PDC as a result of that accredited permaculture training? The PDC is 72 hours, the department is yeah. 1,200 hours. But I, I, I'm yeah, trying yeah, to work yeah. out, so obviously you get to It's built in. But it is built in, yeah. but the diploma is built in. It's not. Yeah. Yeah. The diploma is a very rare beast in Australia. Yeah. Very That's rare beast. I understand, yes. Yeah. And um, I think that, uh, yeah, hopefully, to, if we can get some university stuff in there, yeah. um, that, that will probably be, be, be more significant. It was the, the, the good thing about the diploma was it gave us people who had been elevated by the permaculture community, which made them kind of the people who would likely be the teachers in the accredited permaculture training. Uh, that was very, very handy. But perhaps we need to yeah. move on. At just at the same... Oh, sorry. Well, I just want to comment on the, in the diploma level, which was different from Africa, where the, there was the two levels. One was the PGC, which was 72 hours, and then the, the diploma level was the uh, two years yeah, on, right. on a farm, and the, you, yeah. you, were, you had to, to go on certain uh, uh, subjects. And you do theoretical, you do practical until you complete two years, and then you go back to get a, 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 a diploma. Yeah. But in that diploma, it was also in certain discipline like communication, like uh, education. A designer and number of yeah. different yeah. units, yeah. and that was the, the standard in Africa that we yeah. had. Yeah. Yeah. That was what the uh, yeah. bill originally set up. Yeah. yeah. So, should so we mention a bit about the Gaia? Unit yeah. yeah. So, so Ga Gaia appeared in um, in England. Uh, so it's a, a university which uh, decided to take a different approach to education. Uh, and sort of wanted to break free from the normal kind of structures of, of university. Um, and so the qualification related much more to uh, what the student had experienced out in the world. And we had a stream of people at Gaia who came through our place and they would always be noting stuff down. And it, was, it was quite hard to work out exactly what was going on, but they were sort of like journeymen uh, they were gradually accumulating a whole lot of experience to a level where they could be considered to be pretty well versed in certain areas and, and if you like a sort of a living thesis um, and uh, if anyone wants to know exactly how it works there's a guy called Marco who is uh, here who's, who's certainly been through that course. Andrew here who's one of the founders. Oh well, there you go, you tell us. I'm pleased that you might direct to Marco, he's very good. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> please tell us about that. Was, that was a nice, nice description. Action learning, project based action learning, that's what the yeah. university supports people to do. So that, so, that was, so that was the first kind of toe in the water by a university. And, um, and, and was it to principally mark, mark a master's? Uh, we, we, we do a bachelor's thing. Well, that's that's well. a master's and then a diploma program as well. Diploma, so lower, but not a grad diploma. Uh, uh, we do, actually, we've we, we got our diploma as a multiple outcomes one, so depending on that age, 
an experience of a student, they might either be doing a bachelor's level or they might be doing it at a master's level. So you can do it as well. Yeah, yeah. three masters for five hours of work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so but it's the same, this is sort of the same structure, program structure. Yes, <coughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah, it is. It's, uh, maybe, maybe, we'll maybe we just open that door and, door door and uh, door is, we open I that can't window. Break yeah, open the door and we'll open the window. Yeah. 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 Oh, better. Is there another window? Yeah, we'll have a look at this one as well. Yeah, that one's a bit difficult, yeah. Difficult, just lift it down. It's not impossible. It'll get better. There's a slow happening. When we actually do it. Okay, all careful. Yeah. Okay, so um, oh, we, we, we just need air, otherwise they're all going to um, die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay, it's, it's alright, we'll, we'll compost them. Very much people suffocated because they didn't know how to open up the windows. So, all this time the world is slowly catching up and uh, also, we find that there are more, a bigger percentage of our population going through university. So, back when I was going through university, it was represented only 10%, uh, whereas now there's uh, almost 50% of young Australians who, 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 who do finish year 12 will go through uni. So, like, there's gazillions of them, and then they will go to uni and they'll have a degree. And so, we started finding more and more that like 50, 60, 70, 80% of the people coming and doing our PDC actually already had a degree, and we were teaching this pissy little 10-day course, uh, and it changed their life. I mean, it was just amazing. I mean, these people just couldn't believe that suddenly, well, Rob Hopkins said it, didn't he, today, he just said, like, boom, his brain suddenly got switched in a completely different direction. Uh, but, of course, these people, they want more. They don't want 10 days. They want something gutsy with uh, a whole lot of really good information behind it. So, um, and I think that at the same time, Bell was getting a little bit more into the background. And uh, I mean, Bell had a very antagonistic um, attitude to, to uni. So, uh, Stuart Hill is one of the great old kind of uh, social ecologists that got involved with uh, an agroecologist. He's an ecologist of everything. Um, invite Bill to come and give a lecture at uh, uh, University of Western Sydney and Bill just said, right, okay, well, here I am and, you know, essentially you're wasting your time here. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the best thing, best advice I can give you is get out there and do it. And, and so um, I, I think that a lot of people thought, well, you know, it's, it's, it's time that we actually started work from the top down as well. If, if all of these highly able people were out there and were willing to go through some permaculture education, why would they be going back to do a 10-day course for cash? Why would they be going to do an APT course, which was lower than they were already? A whole lot of them were ready to actually get into this at the graduate level. And, uh, and so a few of us have been nibbling away, nibbling away, because all these covered permaculturists, they're everywhere, every bloody university has got, you know, like a dozen of these people just quietly in the corners, not mentioning anything about permaculture because they're employed as an engineer or whatever it might be. And, uh, and we, we can drag these guys out for sure. So I think we're sitting on this huge resource of people who've got PhDs and masters and years of teaching experience, and I think all we have to do is just ask them for some help and I think we'll get a whole lot of absolutely fantastic staff who are staff of another institution that we don't have to pay very much at least but who can provide great intellectual material for us. Uh, so this faculty um, was um, kind of devised by uh, another <coughs> university. My, my university is far too um, stick in the mud to be interested in, in permaculture uh, and uh, so I think we'll, uh, we'll go on to uh, one last exhibit which is the guys who were graduates 
who did permaculture degrees and what they did with them. So they're not all complete superstars, but this guy was a chemical engineer, did a PDC. He, within three weeks, had built an illegal composting toilet in his backyard, which worked perfectly. He realised that permaculture worked, and he founded a, a private business with a very flat structure with a, a whole lot of guys that uh, uh, collaborated. Uh, sustainable focus, um, incredibly successful um, redesigning the energetics and the water use of hundreds of uh, organisations um, and, uh, and, and got bored with that. Um, sort of became a house husband for a while and during that period he converted his whole street into permaculture. So anyone who wasn't in, in, interested in permaculture, they kind of bought him out until they, their whole street was permaculture street. And uh, they busted open all of the backyard fences. And so the kids would go tum, 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 from, from property to property. They all knew and loved each other. They, they took over the park at the end of the street and they'd all be out there having picnics and so forth. It just completely changed the whole neighbourhood. So... Um, then uh, he, he, he sort of started doing consults uh, uh, largely on water, so he showed that Adelaide um, could, if it caught the, the rain that fell on the hard paved area of Adelaide, actually provide all the water the city needed, rather than guzzling all of the water out of the Murray River. Um, and, uh, and he's now started a new company, The Energy Project. Uh, along the way, he was president of the Wilderness Society, one young Australian of the year for South Australia a division and all round good guy. So um, that's what 10 days can do. I'd like to know, you know what we can do with uh, a full course. Here's Nat Wiseman, this big streak of pelican shit. He, um, he, he, he's, he's got multiple degrees. Like he's a serial higher education addict. And um, so he's, he's done um, uh, science and landscape design plus planning. He did a PDC, uh, founded this urban farm, which is this bit here. So this was a person who had a vacant house block, and, um, and they said, yeah, yeah, sure, we're not going to use it for a few years, you can have a garden there. And bang, up comes Wagtail Farm, and, uh, and, and within a very short time, they're selling vegetables and so forth through one of the markets in the city. Um, he's now director of Village Greens, uh, and they've actually got a lump of land on a peppercorn lease at Aldenga Arts Eco Village, which the village thinks just great because there they are all these lovely sort of permaculture old people and uh, this lovely young man has come along and is producing all these beautiful vegetables and so forth and uh, uh, he's, he's, he's got a, a recipe uh, for I think it's $45,000 turnover per thousand square metres. That's what you can earn if you actually do box schemes or market direct through farmers markets and so forth. Um, so there's, there's, there's some really you know, interesting, and he's just such an academic. You could ask him, is every seed source, every rotation, it's all in uh, Spectacular character. Um, James Ward, who's uh, still basically in the bosom of uh, a university, qualified in environmental science and civil and then went on to hydrology, did a PDC and now he's ended up director of postgraduate studies in water engineering environmental science and uh, he, he's still a nutcase about aquaponics and all things permacultural. Like he, he would be one of our greatest kind of moulds in the university system. Uh, so uh, these are the sort of people that are hiding all over the academic world. And here's Kerry, um, that was doing a PDC at our place a while back, and um, so we just uh, had finished doing a little bit of gardening, and uh, she's an anthropologist. She's been into waste in a big way, like what the hell are we doing with this stuff? Surely something useful. Um, got involved, so we, I contacted her out at Straw Bale Building Workshop, and it was Kerry that really um, managed to find the way that we could get um, graduate study in 
at least one university with uh, Which is accreditation. Central Queensland University, you hear me bang on all about it. Yeah, so, there you go. Oh, I'm <laughs> now, apparently. Okay, cool. Um, so, I guess the first thing to do is to look at why we actually want to do this in the first place, um, why we need to establish permaculture in higher education. But thankfully, a lot of um, our plenary speakers and our keynote speakers at this conference so far have been making exactly that kind of argument. Um, but it was always our hope to expand the scope and reach of permaculture. Um, the crises that we're facing um, are becoming more and more extensive and more and more urgent in terms of needs, uh, need of redress, as, as we all know. Um, uh, but there's also a need to conduct applied research into sustainable and ethical systems. Um, we want to provide new pathways for people to engage um, with permaculture as well. Um, I think it's also a very timely project, but there's a need now to collate um, the expertise of permaculture practitioners from around the world who have been practicing and teaching and driving this movement for decades now. Um, and yeah, there's a real need to make sure that's collated um, uh, in a very driven, guided way. Um, and also a desire to embed permaculture ethics within higher education institutions and to try and help transform those institutions if we can. Um, into something that's going to help drive us forward into the future that we need. Do I press across or down? Uh, down, so. Down? Okay. So, um, that university is Central Queensland University. Um, so, Graham and I began, um, well, Graham began the project of trying to get it into, into higher education in South Australia many years ago um, with other universities, Deakin University and I but I started teaching sustainable development, a global perspective at the University of South Australia and found I was really teaching permaculture to a lot of the students and bringing them to the food forest anyway and, and then I just started saying to Graham, why aren't we just teaching permaculture to start with and being open about it and so we started this process of trying to get it happening and James Ward was um, uh, really fundamental in that process as well. Um, and then, um, through a good colleague of mine, Kira Lee Thompson, um, who is a fellow anthropologist, um, who just won uh, an award in Australia for the top five res um, researchers in Australia under 40, top five scientists under 40, and she's an anthropologist, which is just an amazing achievement, um, introduced me to her boss, Drew Dawson, um, who has this amazing property in the Adelaide Hills. Um, he's, a, he's, a permi, he's not a covered permit. He's been practicing permaculture, but not necessarily calling it that, I think, for many years. And um, I met him, and he said, if you could do anything you wanted, be anything you wanted, be doing anything you wanted, what would that look like in five years? Um, and I started describing a sort of permaculture university, and he just said, yes, yes, let's do it. So he fought really hard to get that happening. Um, and. CQ University have said yes, which is amazing. Um, so what we're actually hoping um, to get happening eventually um, is exactly what one of our plenaries described us needing, which is um, a nested series of tertiary level postgraduate qualifications so that people can start um, from any bachelor in any area um, and enrol into a graduate certificate which can and then go on to a graduate diploma um, onto a master's and then hopefully eventually to a PhD. So we can have people doing PhDs in permaculture. I've got one person who's already <laughs> booked in for the PhD. I suggest to wait for a couple of yeah, years. Yeah, people are saying that to me as well. That's how it's going to start now. So, but yeah, it's going to take a while to develop, I think. Um, so we're also working with partner locations in Australia um, and Asia, which I'll talk more about in a bit. And we're wanting to discuss possibilities in Europe and and in USA as well, and obviously um, collaboration with other institutions and organisations. We want to do this in the spirit of permaculture. This is something that the permaculture movement has needed for a long time, and it's a great opportunity. Um, so we want to make sure we use it to reflect the needs of the permaculture community. I'm really interested to ask, if it's been needed for such a long time, yeah. why did Bill Morrison say that the last place he ever wanted it was at a university? Because to me, you're going in a very elitist direction and it's not it's not able to be shared by any single person in the country. Mm -hmm. To me, permaculture should be open to everybody and 
you're going in a very elitist direction, and I, I'm not sure I'm sure of that. May I no, respond to that? Really yes. Well, First yeah, of all, well, Bill, I'm wanting to Bill, know. <laughs> Bill, Bill, one of Bill's dreams was to always have higher degrees in permaculture. And I don't know how many people took on that job of trying to get or set up permaculture, bachelor and masters and PhDs, but always came up against brick walls because it's very, very difficult to get that accreditation unless you've got a supportive university to do it through. That's why it was so exciting when Jim Yu happened. Um, and, um, I mean, I've been talking to universities for years. I mean, my students grew up with the ABT are getting serious credits for this degree before and diploma. And, um, and so, you know, this is just another level. There's people also bringing permaculture into schools and into community gardens. And so it's got to happen on all levels. And this is yet another level where it is really, really important. Thanks, yeah, Robin. One of the yeah. reasons that, yeah. that, it, I mean, that people like me that you know, mm -hmm. uh, started working when I was eight, yeah. you know, full mm -hmm. there uh, for a journey's work when I was 12, I mean, the only reason that I can work today as a permaculture designer and get paid very well for it is because there, is, there was no university for it. Mm -hmm. So it was yeah. the one thing where when people ask me for a university diploma, it's all where it doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the day that there's a diploma for it, I'm out, I'm, I'm out of a job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you'll be out of a job. If you, well, can, if you can design. No, maybe not me, but the next okay. generation of me, yeah. you know, the grow up in the dirt uh, kind of, yeah. you know, mm. me. And it's, so, it's, 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 yeah, but it's not everybody wants to go and be a permaculture trainer. You know, this is something you can apply permaculture to your own life. Yeah. So if you can provide mm. university students with permaculture training, they can go and take it out to their own garden. They don't own yeah, the big permaculture. It's teaching to the concept of university that you get more credibility if you come out of a university. Yeah. And would you, would, 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 can I just ask, Chris, yeah. would you be happier to be operated on by someone who had done a 10 day training? As a maybe well, five, five, five years later, it's yeah, because you have the I mean, it, to take the health analogy, how no, we no, know no, that the medical no, system no, today has no, many no, problems no, and it works a certain way, and we know that you know, natural health has many problems. It's not like there's no alternative. I mean, you know, in a lot of the areas I work in, apprenticeship is hugely important, and I spent years and years of my life doing apprenticeship. And it's, it's that other form of education that is immensely old and that suits very permaculture very well because it's so specific yeah. and it's so slow and it's so <coughs> homogenized. And that is not recognized one bit. So, so, you, so you don't think there should be any permaculture in higher education? No, I think there is, that is important to look at. And I think it really, really is because there is so much fraud in the permaculture world and so much bad job and I'm a testimony, you know, six times a year for permaculture designers that have done terrible work. But I'm not sure that university is the answer and the only answer. And I think it's oh, important. it is definitely yeah. not the and only answer. hundred percent, it is not the only answer. And it's not pretending to be the only for people answer. people in universities yeah. to realize that because universities have so much, yes, yeah, sway and power that, you know, that they're in field that, you know, it, it, it's great. I, I don't want to... I don't want to diminish that, but it moves a lot of people in things that don't have that insurance, that don't have that credibility. Yeah, but, but, Not necessarily, but, 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 but can we just take some comments? We have two hands that are yeah. sitting there. I just, can we have yeah. you first, yeah. and Robin? Yeah, I just want Thanks. to ask yeah. the question. I think um, this is the, the right direction, especially for us in Africa. Because uh, what has been happening is people who get trained in uh, PTC, they go out and try to train others in uh, permaculture and there was disaster work and permaculture was sort of uh, degraded or watered down because the quality of work that people go and apply, they end up doing just a soil fertility or, gar or uh, organic farming, not permaculture, uh, permaculture design. So with this one will give us a, a mileage to say uh, we, we, we will have a broader understanding of research or, and uh, this is what we need with the yeah, with the, the current global world. Yeah, for example, you have yeah. an indigenous system of learning that is not being recognized. But, but you cannot stick there. You need to integrate. No, you need to integrate. It's just like you finished. And I reckon we ought to just share it. I want a clarification.
information from you, I, I think, which may help with this. What I understand from what you presented before is that what you are offering is like permaculture modules within the university system that people from other disciplines can do as part of their degree? Okay. Or is it just a dedicated yeah. degree in permaculture? Let, 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 yes. So, yeah. the first response about the concerns about permaculture in higher education is that obviously they need to be considered and all of that is really valid, but permaculture is already in higher education yeah. and it has been for some time, yeah. existing as modules in different degrees and, and different yeah, different ways of getting tertiary education. What we're trying to do here is to establish permaculture as a discipline okay. in its own right um, and also find ways to permaculturalise other areas of practice. So as you heard Graham talking about before, even from the beginning, permaculture was focused on many different domains, not just the sort of ag port um, approach. And if we're going to... Um, address some of the crises that we're facing with the urgency that we need to, um, then we need to move and apply the permaculture ethics beyond just the permaculture community um, in other domains and areas of life and in other areas of professional practice. Um, so that's why we started with the idea of a graduate certificate, because the idea is that people are coming in from already established professions. And this is about think, getting them to think about how can they apply permaculture in their profession and in their area and in their life journey. So, I would like to uh, respond to both of yours yeah. and just say um, I am teaching in a community college in the United States, which is, um, I don't know how it all translates to Australia and England, but the first two years before you can go to a university. And there we have a PDC that is sort of the nested model. You can take PDC as one course within a landscape port department's program. Um, then we've developed a permaculture certificate, which is 17 units, which is about, I think, eight or 10 classes. So someone can choose to get the PDC plus, you know, other, other classes. Is that like about a year's worth, or how much is that worth? It's, uh, yeah. yeah about, a year. about a year, but the way that the, the this college works, uh, the classes aren't offered all in one year, so it's like two years mm -hmm. of time it would take to receive this larger certificate. It's called a permaculture design certificate. Yeah. It confuses everyone. Mm -hmm. So you can do the PDC, you can do the certificate, and now we're developing what's called in the United States an AA program, which is two year. So they can get a permaculture design associate's degree, which is two years, and then they can use that to go to the university. But the thing that I wanted to say to you about it, at least in where I'm from, in California, the cost of this education is, I think it's $42 per unit. So basically, people pay $150 or less for a PDC, which is considerably cheaper than any PDC that's mm -hmm. run in the United States, at least. Well, yeah, hundred to two thousand dollars, and the people that come to community college—not all the people, but many of the people—are very low income, very. Or where I'm in Oakland, California, so it's very diverse, and it's not an elite in any way. Uh, maybe compared to you know a third world developing country, but we feel we're so excited about offering this to people who normally you wouldn't know, have access. Yeah, and it's so popular. There's so many people who want to do it. We have waiting lists for a class. I, it's amazing. That one, honestly, that was my initial motivation for wanting to do this, was watching a whole bunch of my friends enrolling in PDCs and having to pay thousands of dollars up front that they didn't necessarily have to do it. Which, I mean, there are obviously pathways that Robin's established now where that doesn't have to be the case. Um, I, but, yeah. Can I respond briefly? Sure. Um, because I'm coming from the UK, mm -hmm. and the fees to do a university one year is 9000 it yeah. costs about 6000 to actually live that year. So you're talking yeah. 15000 a year. Yeah. So if, if we were to take a trained culture degree in our country, oh, no. it would cost, for a three-year course, a minimum <laughs> of 45000 No, fees, uh, fees of 45000 so, so from that point of view, it's going in, into a need. I mean, yeah. there's only one of the questions. I mean, I'm not against it. It's just that different parts of the world 
it would be an eating now country because you've all seen as something really expensive to do, whereas getting PVC could cost you three hundred and fifty pounds. Um, and it still sets you on mm -hmm. the road. So you've got four to five thousand uh, yeah. to three. I mean the other thing the thing <coughs> John raised about this poor causes and good causes. There is the world over, but maybe what we also need to be doing, and I think the UK Permaculture Association are trying to look at that as well, is to actually make sure that we have standards that we all operate on. Because I know that PDCs in this country, mm -hmm. some of them if you operate a two hour a two day course or something or five or six weeks, um, you may get very little out of it. And other courses you could go to and you can get a massive amount yeah. of learning out of it. And so maybe that's also a problem. It's actually a problem of, of actually delivering at a good standard. Yes, I agree. So there are lots of different reasons for this and against it, I suppose. But the, the thing is about providing a pathway that wasn't previously there. Not about trying to get rid of other pathways, it's about trying to enable a pathway that people have been asking for and have wanted for a while and there are people who have wanted it. So, um, you know, and I think that the other point, you use the example of medicine and that is something that we, <laughs> that I want to help use the course to look at, is to get students looking at issues in all these different domains. So I hope we do attract healthcare practitioners who want to, who have been trained in the traditional Western uh, system, and you know are attracted to do this course and to think about medicine from a different point of view. You know, well, we, have, um, we have one who's done a PDC, for instance. Yes, yeah. done this course, but uh, a doctor who did a PDC and he's established a, a garden at the hospital down at Mount Gambia, and, and, and so it's that you know sort of bringing permaculture on top of other skills. Mm. I mean, it's, it's clearly no, I, I wanted to respond for a while to your original point, Barbara. Yeah. So I think mm. that's a serious danger is if mm. a university based course was perceived to have greater credibility than the existing courses. Yeah. So, so your that, yeah, in the book. that would be, it would also be perceived credibility to certainly having worked and taught in the university system in the UK for a lot of really, really bad degrees here, mm. having a, a degree from a university doesn't guarantee anybody having a, a level of professional skills any more than the PDC about policy insurance does. Mm. In terms of this, uh, I really agree with your vision of creating an ecology of different pathways. It's a nice example that Bradford University, as far as I know, is the only place that has a full module based on permaculture. There are a couple of permaculturists uh, Uto Rees Kelly, who are lecturers at Peace Studies there, and they've adapted the PBC as a core module of the Peace Studies program. So that means that all these students, who most of whom wouldn't have access to permaculture in other ways, they get grounded right at the start of their degree in permaculture. They take all the way through it into their work. Quite a few of them um, take university support to do internships with the Permaculture Association after, and they're really valuable source of support, so there are lots of different effects in this approach. Yeah, and I think again the other reason um, you know, why I think some of our plenary speakers highlighted the, the need for this particular type of pathway um, through the PhD, etc., is to get um, research to provide an evidence base for permaculture practice. Um, so if we have people producing PhDs in permaculture, we have all this research coming out, all these theses coming out, this big evidence base being created and collated. And of course there are people who have you know, existing knowledge that's that extensive already, but it hasn't been... Yeah. But, I, mean, I, I mean, one of my fetish books is uh, yeah, Nutritional Anthropology, and I refer to those mm. books all the time. And I came to your talk, you know, I didn't even look at the subject just because, because you were an anthropologist. Mm earlier. Um, but I don't think I come exactly from the same place. I mean, to me, it's not so much the cost of the university that I see as a barrier. It's that I uh, live and have always lived in places where university is a... I mean, it sounds ironic because I am white, but, you know, it's a white people thing. And it would never enter your mind as a, you know, Hispanic or Middle Eastern to go to a university. And it's even annoying to some degree when we see... Um, people coming from the outside to teach from culture to indigenous populations. And there, it's such an issue to, you know, develop enough pride 
in people to keep doing what they're doing when they're doing it right. That it's, um, I mean, you know, I'm not against this and I wouldn't even appreciate it because I do look for research all the time, but it's, um, yeah, it's difficult to manage to have uh, conversations as equals uh, between people that have that practical experience and that often very don't know they have that practical experience just because they've lived that way forever. It's almost impossible to have conversations as equals. And the more that, um, yeah, well, just, just that, the more that, I mean, for, for a while, for a short while, uh, that whole um, permaculture got mixed in with the whole indigenous knowledge thing. And for a while, it looked as though um, that would be valued again. Like that would be considered, you know, that there would be the people listening on the other side, that it wouldn't just be a one way from universities to the indigenous public. And even people with very good intentions, you know, end up very easily in that model. I, 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 think, I think we're all almost back. Okay. You are next. I think I'm almost back. Okay. I know I'm next. You're on stack, but I'm wondering if we're on track. Um, yes, I, I, I don't want to hijack this. Well, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not going to say anything. anything. I'm more at a meta level of what are we doing here. Yeah. And I think that these are valuable points and considerations, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's the focus of what this was supposed to be about. Right. Fair enough, fair enough. And okay. I'd like okay. to... Okay, that's okay. Okay, so, uh, being as we take a university sort of perspective on this, and what you're really proposing here is an experiment in the larger firm of the epistemic community which is the permaculture community, and say this would be a good thing, okay, then we should have some project going on at some level which determines whether this is a good thing when we see the results that we emerge. We should have some idea that if we're making interventions like this, and my intervention would go at university, and Robert's intervention with the APT, and your intervention with the community college, and so on, we should have some way of doing some sort of meta analysis of whether actually what we're doing is supporting the hegemonic uh, relationship which universities have with the corporate sector by going this way. You could be doing that, that might be one of the mistakes we're making. Or uh, we're getting ourselves very tangled up in highly detailed vocational courses which might be very difficult for people to be really creative or whether uh, Community college system. No, no, no. Well, community college system. <laughs> might be, <laughs> might, be really, <laughs> might be really cheap now, but what happens if Obama doesn't get his bill through and it turns out to be really expensive? You know, so there's a whole. We need to be looking at this from the point of view of seeing this whole episode community of ours and working out whether it makes sense to do this or. And, and are we going to monitor it in some way? And who's going to make sure that you don't turn it into? the very same type of academic course that all the people who've done an academic course for three years, they come out and do a PDC for two weeks and they go, oh, yeah. fantastic, what a relief. <laughs> okay. So you so but that's what we might do. We might we might we might screw permaculture back into that horrible academic yeah. going right. nowhere. Look, oh, okay. No, I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. These are really well, important saying, concerns. We do need to have some way of but observing. Before you that. can before you can evaluate something, you have to have an opportunity to do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's important. Wait, so make make all your mistakes on paper.
gave my students hope for the future, you know, who are studying environmental science. They, yeah. they are incredibly excited about permaculture. So I think it would be, a, and they have never heard about it before, so I think it would be a mistake to say it has to be at one level and rather. I think it needs to be yeah. at all level. Because university students can provide research that underpins what people are actually doing you know, on the ground. Thank you. So I just want to say that when I made that comment, so you have, I have to have a chance to do it first, what I was trying to say is that this one iteration, that's the first one, is by no means supposed to be the dominant model of how this should be practiced. And I think that there will be a lot of room for it to evolve into what's needed, and I think that there will be a lot of different needs and different models that suit the needs in different ways. That's all. I just meant, well, I don't think you're going to be able to decide what the perfect thing is before you run it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not process of I'm not convinced there's a need for you two to be defending your approach so much. I mean, it could, just that could create more space to hear different opinions. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Sorry, I don't. Um, we, we had a. Um, presentation about what we we're actually planning on doing and I haven't even said anything about yeah. it. Go for it. <laughs> okay. Let's get back on task. Yeah. Let's get back on task. Yeah. Let's get back on task. 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 Let's get and you have a, you know, a person to do community development in the, in the area, he has a degree in another discipline, and they respect that person because he has gone to invest, he has gone to certain level. So, as long as this one is balances, that even the person on the ground understand that the university plus the indigenous knowledge they are equal, and it helps to, 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 to change the community positively. So I think there is no cut line of saying this one is better than this one, we can do this one separate. It has to be like that. That's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to end with a positive note for the program for Gadawui, but I'm one of my students doing environmental science and my master's and also went to BDC. I was like, oh, okay, finally, like, I can pay attention, like, two weeks full on. And, um, coming back to university then afterwards and then coming to this wall with my teachers actually like they're like permaculturists but either they live out or they're like they're ecologists that have huge resources of knowledge and things that I guess permits to use also but it's, they just think like oh permaculture is something for people in backgrounds right <coughs> they just do it in their garden and I think not only by bringing permaculture to higher education you there could be this accreditation, accreditation for all the students where, where people learn, but it's also about like, getting it out there and um, making it a topic that you can discuss with your teachers. Like if we want this research, what we, we've been discussing on this conference, like we need research on it. We're not, like, I'm not getting any funding, I'm not getting, like even if I try, I'm like, people are like, yeah, well, so what is permaculture? It's something in between, it's not an agricultural, Studies even they say like that's too alternative in ecology. They say it's farming. So I guess by providing a program like this, it can actually get some basis in the scientific world also in academia. Um, Great. Providing that research, I mean. And you can be paid to live while you do it, while you do the study, and that's what in Australia that's what it's about to a fair extent. Being an, enabling students to actually study what they love to study and develop skills in for a significant length of time. Uh, that's, that's the game. Okay, we want to get back. Anyway, I, I yeah, saw one of your PhDs. We've only got 10 minutes, so let's. Oh, oh we've only got 10 minutes? I thought it was before. Sorry. Okay, let's go. Well, I was just very close.
so we, 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 we have some questions. We have some questions for you. Do we, do we want to get oh, we're not even going to talk about what we're doing. Yeah. We whizzed through very quickly. Yeah. It's a break at three years, so we could run over. Yeah. So I mean, essentially, we wanted to, you know, just hear from you, which we just have, and uh, <laughs> and, and and we wanted to ask you some questions to help guide us. We're, we're like, like we've been absorbing what you said, and, and it's very very you know useful because we had this multiplicity of views. And, and, and people are a bit scared about it, and some people are really keen about it, and so on. But uh, Kerry, if you can finish off with, you know, just how we might do it, and then we want to throw a few questions at you, okay. and you can actually hand them in any time you like. Uh, you know, fill them in over breakfast tomorrow or whatever it is. Uh, but we and, and we also want to make connections with anyone who wants to be a player. <coughs> in this because we want this to be a worldwide thing. So, go Kerry. Great, thank you. Okay, so it has actually been approved um, at CQ University. Um, what I was trying to say before, rather than defending it, is just to explain it's an experiment. It's been approved subject to its success, and its success is dependent on whether it actually meets the needs of the permaculture community, whether students want to do it, and whether it's going to be financially viable. Um, but CQ University said yes to the graduate diploma, which will be running from 2016, from first term. Um, it will be uh, global, um, globally available as an online distance learning um, model with residential schools. Um, you probably don't know much about CQ University. They were Central Queensland University, but they have 20 campuses all around Australia now. So they're probably going to change the name. <laughs> to avoid all the questions I've been getting supplicated. Um, but they're a comprehensive regional university, so in accordance with permaculture principles, they've always been working at the edges and valuing the marginal, um, based in small rural centres. And they have a long-term commitment to community engagement and social enterprises at local levels, with special focuses on non-traditional students, um, uh, and have relatively low-cost university fees compared with other Australian universities. And they're also a top-tier university in Australia for land use and agriculture, or agriculture and horticulture. Um, so we're offering the Graduate Certificate in Permaculture Design, commencing Term 1, 2016, uh, which runs from March to June. Applications open, um, well, they're supposed to open at the end of August, but I don't think they have yet, um, with offers made from October. Uh, it's a one-year part-time program that's available internationally. Fees yet to be announced. We can talk more, to, more about that later. Um, but again, we have the fee help for Australian residents who are doing it and potential for international scholarships um, for suitable applicants from overseas. But I've also just heard where, that you can enrol in um, parts of this if you're at another international university as well. Um, so we want to have quality content delivered globally by distance learning with hands-on residential schools in a variety of different climates um, to apply permaculture. In, uh, with an international team of permaculture experts. Um, at the moment, the entry requirement is a bachelor degree in any discipline. Um, you can also apply for course credit for previous related study. Um, so we've been working with David Holmgren from the start um, of this process in development of the curriculum. Um, so he's helping guide its development. And we're also working with a range of lecturers, designers, researchers, and practitioners of permaculture. Um, uh, and a range of other professions to deliver the core content. Um, and we want experts from around Australia and the world to be able to interact with and discuss um, permaculture with students. Um, so I'm currently <laughs> program coordinator based in Adelaide. Um, this is just to point out that, that it's being modelled around um, Holmgren's permaculture flower and as we were talking about expanding it across all of the different domains and that's integrated in the curriculum as well. Um, the main courses are the introduction to permaculture, where we're looking at the ethics and principles and situating permaculture within uh, the social and environmental justice movements, um, then looking at um, creating permaculture solutions. Um, the sustainable agriculture and organics course probably needs a bit more <laughs> explanation than I have time to give you. Um, but when we get to the graduate diploma, we we're going to look at um, specialists like courses that specialise in each of the domains. So that's the first one of those. And then there's the um, permaculture design in practice, which will be the capstone project of the graduate certificate, much like the Greenstone project from Green School. Um, so these will include face-to-face -face residential schools um, at locations around the world. Um, the ones confirmed at the moment are the Food Forest with um, Graham and Anne-Marie Brookman 
um, and David Holmgren in South Australia. But we've also got um, Corkle Farm at Green School in Bali. How many people here know about Green School? Not that many. So, I don't know if you want to talk about food forests. How many people know about the food forest? A few more. <laughs> um, so we have uh, Mediterranean gardens. Uh, a Mediterranean. Hopefully, no, no, yeah, we, 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 we want to. We want to. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so we we represent a Mediterranean climate, yeah. um, whereas clearly uh, the one in Bali represents that fully tropical uh, climate, and we expect there will be international students kind of giving you that cross pollination. But uh, it really, it's probably best if you go to a place where um, the that the climate is going to be similar uh, such that you're getting all of those field trips and garden walks and so forth that are completely relevant to where you're going to be practising. Yeah, so these images are from the food forest um, in Gawler. Um, that's a few of us at the, at the last PDC with yeah. David. Um, so this is Green School Bali. Um, I might tell a little bit of a story about that just because I think it's important in terms of this whole discussion about education and, and the context for all of that. So um, Green School was founded by John Hardy, um, who was an American who um, uh, is heavily dyslexic, um, but a genius designer. Um, so he never did that well with the formal education system, but it's just brilliant in terms of architecture. Um, and he set up a jewellery company that was incredibly successful, made a huge amount of money, went... I can do better than this, sold his jewellery company and decided to build a school that he hoped would address a lot of the issues that he had with formal education. Um, and so he built a green school in the surrounding green village and this is um, one of the models that he uses um, to design the bamboo architecture. Um, this is the heart of school um, and that's what it actually looks like. <laughs> built up... Um, uh, so this is inside the heart of school. Um, that huge bamboo support structure is actually a heart. So the kids can actually sit inside and when they run their hands along the poles, there are strings on the inside that play different notes. So the school actually sings. Um, it's really beautiful. Um, this is like some of the... Um, that's a bridge and a dam there at Green School and this is their... Um, they're trying to get 100% off-grid in the next couple of years. Um, they've got a lot of really innovative energy practices going on there. Um, and this is Call Call Farm, where we'll actually be offering the residential placement. Uh, it's run by John Hardy's son, Oren and Maria. Um, yeah. Uh, so these are some of the reasons why someone might want to do... Um, a permaculture program at Seeker University, but I think we've discussed a lot of them, so I won't um, bang on too much about that. But um, it's about getting, you know, uh, <laughs> you're a user. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah. So it's about getting actual um, internationally recognised postgraduate qualifications from an accredit accredited university, but also injecting sustainable design into people's professional um, toolkits to help address some of the world's biggest um, challenges and providing an opportunity to work with and learn from a range of permaculture experts from around Australia and around the world. Um, we're hoping this is an avenue to unite a lot of different permaculture practitioners in um, one area and collect their knowledge. Um, uh, so we're hoping that this will result in more people creating more ethical and sustainable solutions to the problems that we're facing and shift the full range of human endeavours towards a framework for sustainable op occupation of the, of the planet and also establish permaculture as a recognised professional discipline with the ability to influence policy makers at a high level. Um, that's the end of my spiel about that. So this is if you want to contact us for more information. I should also add that we are trying to increase the residential schools um, around the world um, and that uh, while we've been away over the last couple of days, um, an MOU's been drawn up with EcoCentro in Brazil as well. Um, and obviously we want to collaborate with anyone who's interested and this will hopefully evolve if, if, it, if it's what people want and if it's what people need, then it will grow as, yeah, as needed, how do I, needed. How do I expand this? Um, if you just click on that. That? Uh, it should. That? Or That's double, good. yeah. Okay.
So these these are the questions that we thought would be great if you could. We just hand these out. So people to write on. If you don't have a pad. Thing. Does anyone know how to make this full screen? I'm completely computer illiterate. Make it full screen. conversation like this with Andrew. Because I'm part of a group that's developing a similar project based in the UK and other European countries. And Andrew suggested Apple Convergence as a guy university space. And, uh, so at some point that can host some sort of discussion about these, these issues or these. But, yeah. Yeah, maybe at the Convergence we can actually find a spot. Yeah, well, Andrew's off. off the that's right, so we, we, we've got a tent, we've got this guy university tent there. Oh really? Yeah, okay, yeah, so we have control of the program in that. So we can push it away. Get your own so you, <laughs> you, you can have that at the same time, if we can come into your tent, <laughs> then you're very welcome. I, like, I, think, I think there are also some interesting questions to be asked and some sort of full patterns to be developed around as well. Uh, Somehow, so that it's it just seems that we've got all that. No, it's not going to be visible. Maybe we've made it 50% or something. I don't know. All I need to do is be able to just read the. Yeah, it's kind of screen. If you made that 50%, would that. Oh, just 100. Yeah. Yeah, yeah except so we've got more. And it's got 50 and C. See if it'll. Yeah, it might be illegible, eh? Hey? Um, can people read that? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit sticky there, but it looks. Then you can visit your if we make it a hundred at least. No, 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 no. no. Let's read that. Let's read that. Uh, so folks, if you if, if you wanted to like maybe just write the questions down and um, uh, get them back to us, uh, if you just hand them in at the, the desk uh, as you come in from the you know, the garden side, as distinct from the Euston Road side. Um, what we want to collate all the all the uh, stuff that we've got from talking to you, and we'd love to have Before any. Before we even start leaving, can I just say thank you so much for all your feedback as well? Like it's really helpful, and we really realised how much we needed. So don't feel honoured to just kind of by by having I mean, combined by those questions. If you have other comments, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.